I forgot to delete them off there. Off of the video. It's all right. They're all in chronological order, so I can do it. Do you want to? So that means the way this is showing right now, that's the way it's going to be. All right. Um, what we're going to work on right now is graphing polynomial functions. And we're going to graph them not by using a graph calculator, which is probably the best tool for us to graph them um, in the future and also to check our work. But right now what we're going to do is we're going to graph them off of what we learned. And the first thing we learned was our leading coefficient test. And remember, the first thing for the leading coefficient is we need to determine what is our leading coefficient. Well, remember, your leading coefficient is your first, um, you know, your first term. And actually, well, our first term, we have x to the fourth. And remember, inside of there, we always have a number that's in front, which is a. And on this point, a is either greater than 1 or less than 1. And for this problem, I have a is greater than I'm sorry, a is either greater than 0 or less than 0. For this problem, our a is 1, and it is greater than 0. Obviously, it's not negative. Are you not sure? Not sure? Elbow or? This is important stuff. So for this one, my a, which is in front of my x squared, or my, you know, what are my lean term, is going to be greater than 0. And then also, my degree is even. So when it's even, we either have our end behavior is either both going up or both falling. So they're both rising or both falling. And it all depends on if my A is positive. Since A is positive and my degree is even, I am going to rise left and rise right. All right, that's your leading coefficient test. We've done videos on that. We've done problems on that. Everybody should get to that point. The next thing, so we know what our end behavior is. The next thing we need to do is determine what our zeros are. So remember, our G zeros are when g of x equals 0. So I'm going to say 0 equals x to the 4 minus 4x squared. Working on my factoring, first thing I want to do is always factor out um, common terms. I can factor out an x squared, and that's going to leave me with x squared minus 4. All right, I can't factor this any further, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as a set of linear terms when I have a set of linear factors. Since these both are multiplied gives us zeros, I can say that x, 0 equals x squared and x squared minus 4 equals 0. Solving now for 0, and one thing just to kind of notice, you guys notice my linear factor is squared, right? I could write this like this. Right? That's the exact same thing. Remember, whenever you have your factor and it's squared, we know it's going to be a multiplicity of 2. Or when it's squared, it's to the fourth power. Whenever it's to an even power, we're going to have a multiplicity of 2. So let's just write in. And that's going to become very helpful when we're graphing this. So x equals 0. However, I know it's going to have a multiplicity of 2. Here, my whole factor is not squared. I know the x is squared, but the whole factor is not squared. So therefore, my answers for these are going to be um, a multiplicity of 1. So I add a 4 on both sides. x squared equals 4 square root. x equals plus or minus 2. Right? And these are going to be a multiplicity of 1. Graphing it. First thing we want to do is we want to apply our points. We, have, we know we have a point at 0, 0, negative 2, and positive 2. Right? We know our end behavior. It's going to rise to the left and rise to the right. All right? So that's all we know right now. That's from the earlier part of the chapter. Everybody should be able to do this for every single problem. Right? Now, the last thing we just need to do is, by using the intermediate value theorem, we know that there exists, on this graph, we know that there exists a point between these two zeros. We also know there's a point between these two zeros. Now, there's one more important thing I want you to remember. Before even picking my points, 
this is a multiplicity of two. So that's going to tell me it's going to touch it, right? Correct? So that means it's either going to go, I'm not going to cross at zero, zero. And here, if I'm going down, this is telling me it's going to go through. Uh, since these are a multiplicity of one, it's going to cross. So that means I'm going to have a line that's going to go through those two points. And just always thinking, since this one has to bounce or touch it, I know it's going to be a downward spiral. Because there's no way I can go an upward spiral and then have it not cross again. So let's pick these two points. Um, I picked, how about we do f of negative 1 and f of 1. Let's make this easy on, on ourselves. So f of negative 1 would be negative 1 to the 4 minus 4 times negative 1 squared. f of negative 1 ends up equaling negative 3. Negative 1 to the 4th power is 1, right? Minus negative 1 squared is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. 1 times minus 4 is negative 3. So I go down to negative 3. 1, 2, 3. I'm going to make a point. F of 1 would be the exact same thing. So that's going to give me 1 raised to the 4th power minus 4 times 1 squared f of 1 equals um, negative 3. So then I go down to here. So now, all I got to do is just connect all my points. I've found two points between my zeros. I know what the multiplicity is, and I know what the end behavior is. So let's connect. <laughs> so that is how you find, um, that's how you graph a polynomial using your leading coefficient test and your zeros, and using the multiplicity as well.